Game 7 of the World Chess Championship 2018. Welcome to analysis of the game. Carlsen, the world champion against Kawana, his challenger. And today, once again, Carlsen with the white pieces, his second white game in a row. Why is that? Well, in the first half of the tournament, Kawana started with the white pieces. And now in the second half, to make it fair, Carlsen starts with the white pieces. But since he also finished the first half with white, he has a second one in a row. So the question was, would he be better able to put pressure on Kawana than in his last white game where he actually was on the back foot and at one point even losing. Let's get into it. Carlsen started as in game number two with 1d4 and in fact both players followed the opening for a very long time. This is once again the orthodox queen's gambit, a very solid choice for black and here in this line so far so good. We've all seen that in game number two up to this point and in this position in game two Carlsen played rook d1 and today he deviated from that by going knight d2. All right so with knight d2 there's the idea of knight b3 hitting both queen and bishop and this is why the two main moves in this position are for one bishop b4 making use of the pin and for the other bishop to e7. But Koana plays neither. He goes queen back to d8. And once again, very interesting preparation by Team Koana, who would find a really unusual move, but which seems to be just fine. This move only has been played 13 times. The other two moves, bishop e7, bishop b4, have been played over 200 times. But queen d8 seems to be sound. Same idea, getting out of this attack and very solid move. Now Carlsen goes knight b3 anyway, the bishop retreats, bishop b6, bishop e2, queen to e7, and white is stepping out of a potential e5 move by going bishop g5, and black takes on c4. Here white could take back, but instead he chose knight to d2 to rather take back with the knight later on on c4, and black goes knight e5. So that if white takes on c4, uh, pair of pieces is traded. Now castle, bishop d7, black completes his development, white goes bishop f4 to attack the knight, knight retreats, knight g6, bishop to g3, not to allow the trade of knight against bishop here. And now black goes bishop c6, knight takes c4, and we see white has regained the pawn, but the position is completely symmetrical, black is fully developed, and position is simply equal. Once again, Kawana has neutralized the white advantage here, or the advantage to be white, no pressure whatsoever. Now white is threatening to take the bishop, so the bishop retreats to c7, and rook fd1 was played, black mirrors that, goes rook fd8, the rooks are traded, white didn't really have another good way to improve his position, so Carlsen trades off all four rooks, and black goes for another piece trade here with 95 and obviously with every piece trade black is getting closer and closer to a complete draw. White goes queen d4, knight takes c3, queen takes c3 and this was the first curious moment in the game. Here the commentators were expecting bishop b5. Instead Kawana played bishop takes g3 and let me explain what's happening here. Why bishop b5 was recommended the reason is that black would like to trade his bishop against the knight. These bishops will be traded anyway at some point and then black would like to be left with the duo queen and knight against queen and bishop. So here you can see obviously the knight is pinned cannot move so white plays something like let's say g3 and here black doesn't have to take at this point but just for illustration purposes and no matter how white takes here if he takes with the queen obviously if the queens come off, black brings the king to the center and nothing will happen here. This is a dead draw. And if bishop takes c4, well in this specific case it's particularly not so great, but let's say black just plays a move like h6. In any case, white has no hopes for an advantage here. In general, the dual knight and queen is a bit better than bishop and queen when, it, when it's just the two, because the queen and knight can control any square twice because the knight can control any square on the board, right? But the bishop 
and queen, they can only control the light squares twice, but not the dark squares. So then the side of the bishop has a disadvantage on the dark squares. And this is something to keep in mind. In this position, it doesn't matter that much. It's still just equal. But if any side could be better in such situations, it would be the side of the knight. So this is why the commentators were expecting bishop to b5, because it's a strategically reasonable decision. It makes a lot of sense. Instead, Kawana goes bishop takes g3 and queen to d7. And the funny thing is now actually we'll see that white gets this duel, queen and knight against queen and bishop. So this is what baffled the commentators a bit here, but it doesn't change the evaluation of the position. It's still just equal. Bishop d3, now b6 to give the bishop room and also put the pawns on the opposite color to, to the bishop. This is what you want to do in general if you just have one bishop left. So they both complement each other, bishop and pawn. They both take squares away. The pawns on the dark squares take obviously the dark squares away and the bishop the light squares. So here white cannot win a piece with bishop takes g6 in case you're wondering. First this looks like winning something but black has a check on d1 and gives a perpetual right away. So that would be a draw. And this is why in this position Carlson goes f3 to stop these kind of ideas. Now bishop b7 and here Carlson takes on g6. And this is what I was talking about. Now actually white gets this duo queen and knight against queen and bishop. Still the position is equal here. But if anybody can hope to be better it's white. Kawana plays a good move, queen to c7, hitting the pawn on g3, as well as preparing a queen trade here along the c file. Now e5 was played. This move is a move you want to make because you fix a pawn on a dark square, and that means a black pawn on a light square. And why do you want to do this? Because this pawn can never be attacked by the light square bishop. Obviously, as the bishop cannot switch colors, and in general this is what you want to do and also here white establishes, establishes an outpost for his knight. Now queen c5 was played a good move by Kawana driving the king to a worse square. The king has to go to h2 or h1 but h2 makes more sense. King f1 would be met by bishop a6 pinning the knight and white doesn't lose the piece but he loses the pawn a3 and this is also pretty bad so not to be played by white. So king h2 King h2, now bishop a6, forcing white to play knight to d6, and queen takes c3, b takes c3. We reach this endgame where white has an active knight on d6 and has a bit more space with his pawn on e5, and this will probably Carlson was hoping for to get something here in this endgame. On the other hand, one problem for white is his pawn structure is weakened on the queen side, and if the king comes over at some point he would be very quick to collect those pawns. So that's the drawback here in the white position. Let's see how this goes. f6. Now white would like to keep the pawn e5 so he protects it with f4. King f8. Now the kings come to action. Of course the kings need to be active in the end game so both sides bring the king. Now Carlson goes king e3 and here Kawana plays bishop f1. And it turns out, what can white do now? He doesn't want to lose the pawn, so he needs to go back. And then black also goes back. Now Carlson went forward, black went back. And in fact, the players agreed to a draw here, which is completely reasonable because white doesn't have any good way to play for a win, especially because of his weakened pawns here. As I said, black would be very fast to bring his king over here. And whenever white is doing something, he could also risk to be worse. Let's just see one sample line. The commentators discussed c4 in this position. But here black goes king c6, king e3, king c5, king d3. And really black can do a number of things here. But for example, you could go f5, king c3, and now simply trade these pawns off b5. And c takes b5, bishop takes b5. And this is just completely equal. White cannot go into a king and uh, into a pawn game here. Here only black can be better and it's maybe even winning already. So this is not possible. And then there's really nothing else to do here. So Carlson realized this and went for this three times repetition here, moving the king back and forth. And Kawana can also not deviate from that. He has no 
winning chances either. So a draw was agreed and that means we have the seventh draw in a row. Three and a half, three and a half and well, it feels like I'm repeating myself every game but once again it shows black is black is okay. No problems whatsoever. Kawana neutralized white once again neutralized Carlson and the two whites that Carlson had and where people said before and oh this would be the chance for Carlson to strike. Nothing came of it. Obviously in the last game Carlson was even losing at one point and today he had no chance for an advantage whatsoever. Another easy draw for Kawana with the black pieces. So game number eight is tomorrow. Then once again the challenger Kawana with white. If you would like to be notified for my next analysis please subscribe to the channel for that and all the other videos that I publish in the future. And then let me know if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll see you next time hopefully for a decisive game. Until then.